Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is worthy of our praise today. He is worthy of our worship. Amen. Can we stand to our feet for a few moments? I'm so grateful today for the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful for his grace that keeps us here. By his grace, we are here. And you know, grace means more than mercy. In the Bible, grace is much more than mercy. Grace means the power of God. It means the anointing and the power of God to live right, to talk right, amen, to walk right, hallelujah, to live by the will of God. We just had communion on Wednesday. How many were blessed by that? Thank you, Jesus. Tremendous time to get ourselves right with each other and ourselves right with God. There's nothing like remembering the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you that there, no man has ever done a greater thing than Jesus Christ. The, what's special about Jesus and the story of Jesus is not that just Jesus died on the cross. It's not just that he was whipped, that he felt pain, that he put a crown of thorns was placed on his head. Many people have gone through similar pain. Many people have endured similar humiliation. But no one has ever endured that humiliation and been God at the same time. That is what makes the sacrifice, I feel chills in the Holy Ghost. That's what makes the sacrifice of Jesus so wonderful, is that he endured the pain of the cross and he was God. He endured the pain of the cross and he was holy. He endured the pain of the cross and he was the king of kings. He was the Lord of lords and he did it for me and he did it for you. And that is a good reason to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a good reason to give him glory. It's a good reason to exalt his holy name. Can we do that right now? Somebody lift up your hands, lift up your voice to God and glorify him. Because you are here because of his cross. You are here because a God came down from glory. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We give you glory today, Jesus. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. Woo. Praise God. It's been storming for quite a few weeks now, hasn't it? Flooded roads everywhere, you know, trying to get from one place to the next. I've, there, are, there are lakes that are popping up in Stockton that I never knew. <laughs> There are lakes that are popping up everywhere. And, you know, uh, for some reason, I have felt compelled to follow the storms through uh, the uh, precipitation uh, forecasts. And there's something that I noticed that uh, the Lord spoke to me about this morning that I felt the Lord impress on me this morning. One thing that we have to realize is that these storms didn't begin here in Stockton. They actually traveled across the Atlantic. They had to travel a whole ocean to get here. They actually start where it's summer right now in Australia and that whole area. Is, there's a lot of precipitation. And it goes up and it travels through this streamline. It's almost like a river of clouds that travels and it produces wave after wave after wave of storm clouds. And then this morning, the Lord brought to my heart in, re in reference to that. The fact that the word of God says that he prepared a fish for Jonah. He prepared a fish for Jonah so that he could swallow Jonah and then send him where he would need to go. And you know what it takes to prepare a fish? That means that fish has to be born. That fish has to grow up eating the right things. There was an ordained, whew, there was an ordained purpose for that fish. I feel the Holy Ghost now. There is an ordained purpose for that fish. Even though that fish went through some natural processes, it was a supernatural ordination of God. 
And there has been storms that have been ordained, that have started from across the Atlantic to reach here. There has been, there is a revival that is arriving right now. There's a stirring up in the Holy Ghost that is settling over the people of God right now. Hallelujah. Woo! The storm clouds have gathered, hey, at CLC. Ah, and can I tell you that it didn't just happen. There is a foreordained purpose for the cloud of glory that we feel here right now. God has prepared it. God has designed it to happen today. And if you open up your spirit, you can receive it. If you open up your heart and your mind, you can get everything that God has for you this morning. You can get everything that God has for you in this season. This is a foreordained time. And you know what? You can just splash around in the superficial waters and just get the overflow of everybody else's blessing. Or you can, you can throw yourself into revival headlong. You can throw yourself into consecration head first into the water. Head first into the deep. Head first into what God has for you. You can either take advantage of this season by receiving, and you're going to receive a blessing. If you never fast and you never pray, you will get a blessing during this season. Why? Because God is pouring out blessings. <laughs> or you can receive a manifold blessing of God. You'll receive a blessing without praying. And without reading your word, why? Because it's going to be pouring out uh, on this altar every Sunday morning service, every Wednesday, every ministry. You're going to get a dose of the power of God. And you can just get a little blessing and say, wow, that was a good season. Or you can pray more than you ever prayed before. You can read your word more than you ever did before. You can fast and consecrate more than you did before. And God will take the blessing that you would have gotten. He's going to fold it twice and fold it three times. He's going to fold it four times. And he's going to pour out glory. This is not just going to be a revival of miracles and the supernatural and the gifts of the Spirit. This is going to be a revival of hunger. It's going to be a revival of a drive that takes you to the prayer room and gets you a hold of God and opens up the windows of heaven. Hey, 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 hey out on your personal life and then it's going to overflow onto your family. It's going to overflow in your job. You're going to be speaking in tongues in your job. You're going to be speaking in tongues while you drive. Hey, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. As some of you are going to give in, be given the hunger to pray without ceasing. Some of you are going to get the anointing of God to pray without ceasing. Where you're going to get a blessing in this Sunday morning service. And you're going to feel the Holy Ghost so intensely. You're going to be speaking in tongues under your breath as you leave. You're going to be speaking in tongues while you're digging a ditch. You're speaking in tongues under your breath. Hallelujah. While you're serving that person in that restaurant, while you're in that your office, you're gonna be trying to get an accounting report done. You can say, hey, call Sababa. You're gonna just start speaking in tongues. You're gonna start prophesying over your job. I feel it. You're gonna start prophesying over your family. You're gonna start prophesying. Hey. <laughs> yes, some of you are gonna be in your home thinking that God wants you to rest. He wants you to rest after a long day's work. 
but then you're going to get quickened in the spirit. Quicken to get up off of your sofa and get in your car. And God's going to have you driving around your block. He's going to drive you around street corners, interceding for people. Why? Because God is pouring out blessings. He's pouring out blessings. He's opening up the windows of heaven. And he's going to flood this city. He's going to flood this city. You know what? Lakes lakes they're going to start showing up in this city where you didn't where you didn't realize they would all right there's a lake there was a lake last night right on 8 mile road by trinity parkway is a lake never seen one there ever before never expected it to be there but you know what god's going to sprout up revival throughout this city in ways and with people that you never imagined and it's going to blow your mind And you know what? It's going to be something that you will not be able to take the glory for. This church will not be able to take the glory for that revival. It's not going to be a direct product of us knocking on doors because we've been knocking on doors for a long time now. We've been knocking on doors. Brother Savager, we've been going out in our outreach for a long time now. But now is a time when revival has come. And we're going to say, look, it wasn't by our human effort, but it was by the grace of God. He chose this time. He chose this time now. Oh, if you want to be a part of that, why don't you lift your hands and say, God, we desire. We're hungry for it today. We're hungry for it in the Holy Ghost. I want it, God. I want it. Drive me, God. Drive me into relationship. Drive me into your presence. Give me a hunger for your way. Give me a hunger, God, to know you. Give me a hunger for the Holy Ghost. Revive in me my hunger to go and seek after you. Oh, revive in me my hunger to seek you more than I ever did before. To see your glory. Revive in me that hunger, God. Oh, let's clap our hands to God and just give him praise for what he's doing. Now to get into the preaching of the word. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. I need the grace of God today to speak everything that he's placed in my heart to share. Actually, let's start in Numbers chapter 22, verses 1 through 4. I want to talk about the word of God. I want to speak the word of God to place in us, renew in us a sense of loyalty for the kingdom of God. A sense of loyalty to the word, to God's way, and not our own. Today, I want to talk about being fruitful by the power of God. And the power of God to be fruitful. Te kolobosha. 22, verses 1 through 4. Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was exceedingly afraid. Somebody say they were afraid. afraid. Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was sick with dread because of the children of Israel. They were so scared they were sick. They were sick of fear. The fear had crippled them. You know, there's a, there's a kind of anxiety that's diagnosed uh, medically. And as a result of anxiety, oftentimes individuals get IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. You know what that means? That means that an individual is so anxious that it affects their digestive system. Their physical body is affected. In other words, God gave Moab 
irritable bowel syndrome <laughs> because of how much fear, come on, they had for the people of God. That's amazing. Can I tell you that Satan is afraid of you? The enemy is sickly afraid of what the people of God can be if we just believe his word. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 4, so Moab said to the elders of, Mid of Midian, now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at the time. Lord, Father, we come before your presence, Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the anointing, God, your spirit that's here in this place. You have anointed us, God, to open up our ears. You're empowering us to open up our ears and understand your word, God. You are empowering us to receive your word and be transformed by it. Take us from glory to glory today as we receive your word. As we see you, God, by the revelation of your word, transform us into the same image, God. That we would become more like you. And in becoming more like you, we do what you do. Pour out the miraculous today. Oh, pour out the supernatural God in our midst. Anoint my heart and my mind, God, to be precise in the spirit, to speak directly, God, what you desire your people to hear. And we will be sure to give you all the honor and the glory forever, God, because you are worthy. And only you are worthy of all the praise. Why doesn't somebody give a hand praise to the Lord and just thank him, be grateful for the move of the Holy Spirit. We love you. We love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, we thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. You may take your seats today. I want to go now to chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. The Word of God says here in the same book of Numbers, Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. The very people that were afraid of Israel... The very people that were afraid of being conquered by the people of Israel. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor. And the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. See, the people of Israel, they were joined in a covenant. They were joined in covenants. In packs through marriage to Baal of Peor. Why? Because Baal was the God worshipped by the Moabites and the Midianites. For God, there was no difference between marriage to pagan families and worship and harlotry. Because to be bound to them in marriage is also to be bound to their gods. To be committed now to the wives, to the daughters of the men and the families and the fathers of Midian is to be committed even to the well-being of the Midianites and the Moabites because family marriage or marriage in those days, it's a little bit less that way today, but marriage in ancient times was not just a marriage between two people, it was also a marriage between two families. Two clans, they were connected to each other and they were committed to each other's well-being. That means that men among the Israelites and families and clans among the Israelites were binding themselves up to the well-being of the Midianites and the Moabites who did not have the fear of God. Help us, Jesus. Then the Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. There's a lot that goes into the judgment of God. God never judges a group of individuals without being justified for that judgment. That is one thing that we have to assume upon the text. 
Many times when reading things like this, our perception might be that it is a cruel thing. But we know that everything that God does is good. And many times scripture is not concerned with giving you the details as to why he enacts a certain judgment. He gives you the basics of the story. But what we assume here is that their worship of Baal during that time. And what we know of the worship of Baal is actually that it was a very cruel And a very, not just pagan, it wasn't just as simply as worshiping other gods, but there was a lot of cruelty involved with the kind of worship that the pagan god Baal expected, amen, of the people. And let's go to verse 6. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses And in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now when Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through The man of Israel and the woman through the body, so the plague stopped, was stopped among the children of Israel. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal among them, so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. Now I want to skip to verse 14. Now the name of the Israelite who was killed was who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri the son of Salu, a leader of a father's house among the Simeonites. Now when you see a detail in the word of God, pay attention. Because the details of the word of God are intentional. It's intentional in what it leaves out. And it's intentional in what it includes. It includes. So it says here that this particular man of Israel, he was the son of Salu, a leader of a father's house among the Simeonites. Simeon was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. This basically is saying that this was not a regular Son or son of the children of Israel. He was a leader that represented a whole group of individuals within the tribe of Simeon. Verse 15. And the name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cosby, the daughter of Zuri, Zur. He was head of the people of a father's house in Midian. Then the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Harass the Midianites and attack them, for they harassed you with their schemes, by which they seduced you in the manner of Peor and in the manner of Cosby, the daughter of a leader of Midian, their sister, who was killed in the day of the plague because of Peor. Now I want to skip over here to chapter 31. Verse 8, they killed the kings of Midian with the rest of those who were killed, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian, Balaam, the son of Beor, they also killed with the sword. Wow. All right. In the word of God, we see this story of an Israelite man who takes a wife from the Midianites. Now, at first glance, without reading the context or the story before and after, many times people assume that this was just simply a marriage between a young man and a young woman. And many times that's because we have notions of marriage and dating in this modern time that we project to the ancient time. But marriage in the ancient time was very different. The purpose was bigger and greater than marriage, how marriage is practiced today. 
The way that marriage is practiced today is very individualistic. And in my opinion, there, are, there is much about that individualistic approach to marriage that kind of needs to be broken down, right? And today, it's just an individual that marries an individual. And there is, uh, there is minimal interaction or mineral, minimal uh, relationship between the family of the wife and the family of the husband. However, this is different depending on your culture, right? For example, in Hispanic culture or Mexican culture, uh, we still have a resemblance, at least for those who are a bit more traditional in the Mexican culture, where our aunts and uncles are considered almost like second fathers and second mothers, and our cousins are considered almost like brothers and sisters. How many know what I'm talking about, okay? That's how it is. But, and in this time, it was even more extreme than that. It was about families coming together and being united with each other. And you see, if you look at the context of the people of Israel, we know that the people of Israel at this point in time were in the midst of fulfilling a curse or a judgment that God had enacted against Israel. He said, because you did not believe that I could carry you into the promised land, and you did not believe that I was powerful enough as your God to deliver the Amorites and the Jebusites and all of the Canaanites into your hand, God said, I will judge you, and 40 years will pass, a generation will pass, and I will not allow the current generation to inherit the promises of God. So now we have actually a social an understanding, a cultural understanding of what Israel was going through. You know what that means? That means that the fathers of the households were judged by God and cursed by God to never own land because they were wandering in the desert. They were cursed to never buy land, own land, practice any kind of ownership during that time period. God wouldn't allow it. They had to travel with the cloud. They had to travel with the pillar of fire, which means they were nomads. There was no sense of ownership. They were homeless in the desert, being fed with manna from heaven. They were homeless in the desert. And if there is something that can tax the sense of identity of an individual, it's the feeling that you have nothing. It's the feeling that you don't own anything, that you don't have a future, that you don't have a career, that you're just being fed every day. Somebody's just dropping food in your home as the manna would fall from heaven. They had nothing to work for. They had nothing to dream of. All they had was whatever God was giving them, and some of them got frustrated. You see, Balak was afraid He was afraid of the people of Israel because they were great and their God was great. He believed in their God more than the people of Israel. Wow. And he tried to curse them through Balaam, the false prophet, but Balaam could not prophesy. He could only bless the people of God. So they devised a scheme. Say, you know what, if we entice them and seduce them with the Midianite women... And they marry themselves to our clans and to our family. You see, this was very enticing for the people of Israel because they did not have property. But if they to the Midianites, then they could have property. Then they could live in their land. Then they could have possessions. That which God refused to give them, they were trying to take a shortcut by their own hand. And their own striving. They were attempting to achieve some sort of promised promised land by their own strength, by their own dreams, by their own ideas. They were pursuing it their way. But how many know you cannot receive the promises of God doing it your way? You need to do it God's way. God had told the people of Israel, be fruitful and multiply. 
And this is actually very connected. Every time God says be fruitful and multiply, many times God adds the notion of El Shaddai or God Almighty. That because I am God Almighty, you have permission to be fruitful and multiply. Have as many children as you want. And you see, that still plagues us today, right? Many people avoid having children because it costs a lot of money, right? And, and you know what? It was even more extreme in that day. We're talking about ancient times. Uh, and God is telling them, be fruitful and multiply. Expand your businesses. Expand and have large families. And they say, God, how am I going to survive? here in the wilderness how am I going to survive and God says I am God Almighty which means I can provide the blessings that you need to fulfill the call that I have given you but they could not be fruitful and multiply their way they had to do it God's way and meanwhile the sons of Israel were having babies with the Midianites the daughters of Israel were left barren The daughters of the Israelites had no husbands. The daughters of the Israelites had no families. Because the young men were looking for a blessing their own way. They were looking for the promised land their own way. And the young women who were supposed to bear the blessing of being fruitful and multiplying were left without children. How is it that God gave them a commandment and a blessing? Be fruitful and multiply. I am God Almighty. I can supply your every need. I am the one who gives you your inheritance. And yet they turn around and try to strive for these things their own way. They try to develop their own dreams, their own desires, their own futures and say, this is the way. This is the quickest way to property. This is the quickest way to a home. This is the quickest way to a career. I I could be safe and financially secure in my future. I'm going to marry a woman that's not an Israelite, but God cannot bless that. He cannot bless the womb, the womb of the pagan women because the only way that the people of God would receive the blessings of God Almighty is if they were doing it God's way and they were being fruitful and multiplying within the people of God who were the recipients of God's blessings. Hallelujah. They had to do it the right way. What drove them to the women of the Midianites? What drove them to this? Fear. Fear of not attaining an inheritance. Pride. Self-sufficiency, attempting to be successful by their own strength, by their own efforts, and also pleasure. Because Baal was the god of prosperity according to the teachings of that time. The flesh is seductive. And it's seductive because it seeks immediate experience. That's the thing about the flesh. It's very interesting, right? Because the flesh is not necessarily, by, uh, it, it has sin nature in it, but it is not by nature sinful. That is why emotions are not sinful. That is why our hands themselves, they're not sinful. It's the temple of God. That's why you shouldn't corrupt your flesh. You shouldn't tattoo your flesh. You shouldn't pierce your skin. Because your body does not belong to you. It belongs to God. So there are aspects of our physical body, okay, that, uh, that are, is not inherently evil. But, however, there is a neat nature within our body. Our body has direct perception to this world, right? I just felt the AC. It feels good, right? Because I'm, right? And, and that's my body interacting with the world. It's direct and immediate experience. And it's that immediacy of relief that the flesh convinces the soul that it needs. It's the ready to hand it's that which is in front of you, right? Uh, many of us made uh, New Year's resolutions regarding our health. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, not, but I did. 
that you know what? There's a benefit to having good health, longer life, better quality of life. But those are long-term benefits. Those are benefits that don't come except for a month and two months and three months of consistency. Hallelujah. But there's a Popeye's chicken on the way home. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And my Lord, I, I love me some yen do. Hallelujah. Stock the nights know what I'm talking about. I used to like flips, but I think they're under new management because it's not the same. And you know what? That meal on the way home is more immediate. It's right here. It's in my wallet. I just got to go through the drive through and take my... And pay for it. And I can have it now. I can have pleasure now. I can have what my body desires now. And yet, however, by purchasing pleasure now, you forfeit the blessing of good health later. And that's the thing about the flesh. It's the most direct access to experience now it's the most direct access and it begins to convince the soul to make decisions based on present perception and maturity maturing not just in the things of God but also in life this is what young people you have to understand right you are in a journey Acts 29 and many young adults and many adults are That was me. Test, test, test. I clicked it off. Sorry. The sound men are awesome. That was not you. It was me. You are in a journey of what it means to withhold yourself from accessing pleasure. Right? This is your journey in having to do homework. Oh, uh, Lord. Right? You have to put down things that you enjoy to do your homework because it's going to feel good and it's going to be a door towards your future to get your high school diploma. Praise God. It's the will of God for you to graduate. But it's so hard to put down those things that you enjoy because it's right now. It's right here. But God is trying to teach you to say no to the pleasures right now because there's a greater pleasure that will come later of being in the will of God. See, sin works the exact same way. Sin is so enticing and temptation is so enticing because it is right now. But if you give into sin and you give into temptation, you forfeit your meeting with God in the prayer room later. You forfeit meeting with God on a Sunday morning service. Why? Because you were too busy experiencing the sin of this world. You wanted pleasure now. You wanted happiness now. And you see, the, it, but and nature, it tries to imitate this process. Uh, Satan, he tries to imitate this process uh, because peace is something that humanity thrives for. And peace is something that God can give. The enemy creates alternative ways uh, of achieving this peace, uh, which is why this world uh, is so bogged down and destroyed by drugs. Uh, because you don't have to wait for drugs. Uh, you can put it in your veins right now you can smoke it in your lungs right now but if you can find some way to make God your rest and when you feel down in your day when you feel stressed out if you can find your way to turn the corner into the house of God and pray to the Lord and say, God, I don't know what's going on in my life, but I can't run to no one else but you. You are my rest. You are my joy. You are my peace. You see, if you would take of the sin, you're trying to do it your way. If you take of the drugs, you're trying to do it your way. But if those that wait on the Lord, God has an inheritance for you. He has a blessing for you that you will not be able to contain. 
Why? Because the land of promise was a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a land of the supernatural. And God has a supernatural move waiting for you. If you just wait. Wait and push back the immediacy. The immediacy of the experience of the flesh. The immediacy of the now. I'm talking about doing things God's way. I'm talking about doing things the way that God has designed it to be. We are not in the time of the people of Israel. So what I am not talking about is some type of physical land that you're going to inherit. What I'm not talking about is a career that you will have. Although certainly because you do it God's way, God can, can give you a career that's a blessing. Absolutely. What I'm talking about that applies to us today is that if we are going to do anything in this life, if CLC is going to do anything that God can bless, it has to be the apostolic way. It has to be the apostolic way. It cannot be any other way. You see, we have many churches that are striving they're pushing and they're pulling to be persuasive. They're pushing and pulling to convince. They're pushing and pulling to be attractive. And they're putting up lights and smoke. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with smoke. I'm not preaching against smoke. But when you turn on these beautiful lights and make your church seem like a club. Because you are afraid that the power of God is not good enough to transform an individual. Hey, you see, I'm convinced that a lot of churches, they have amazing praise teams. They have amazing songs, not because they know that God's going to show up, but because just in case God doesn't show up. People can at least say it was a great praise set. <laughs> people can say, oh, yeah, people were jumping in the altar. Oh, we can say, wow, that was an amazing song. Well, did you hear that sol soloist? Did you hear that run? They should be saying, did you feel Jesus? Did you feel the power that was in that place? We got too many churches that are trying to do it their way. But there is only one way. It's the way of power. There's only one way. There's one way. That's the apostolic way. Paul said, I did not come to you with persuasive words, but in demonstration of spirit. I came in demonstration of power. Can I tell you why? Because we, and Pastor said it the other day, we cannot compete with the world when it comes to persuasion. We can't compete with their persuasion. That's why Paul was not concerned with coming with the words of wisdom of man. He only came knowing one thing. I know Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why? Because there is power in the gospel. There is power in the word. And you know what? Let me tell you one thing. And I want you to record this well in your spirit. We may not be able to, to compete with the world's persuasion, but the world cannot compete with the power of God. The world cannot compete with the Pentecostal outpouring of the Spirit. Woo! Hey, and I know this. Why? Because when God filled me with the Holy Ghost... My mind said, this is weird. My mind said, I don't understand. But my spirit was on fire with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. My spirit was on fire with power. And though my mind wanted to reject it, my soul rejoiced because I felt the glory of God. Hey, 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 hey. See, you can argue against an idea, but there is no arguing against an experience. And nobody can tell me that God isn't real because I felt him. I felt him for myself. I have a testimony. 
I have a testimony. I know what God has done for me. And you know what? I've tried it my way before. I've tried looking for my own mental health before. But it's when I stepped into the presence of God that everything changed. If we're going to do anything, church, it has to be the apostolic way. It has to be the way, not of persuasion, but of power. Not of emotionalism, but of the spirit. Hey, I don't know about you, but I need more. I need more than just positive speaking. I need more than just positive psychology. I need more than people to encourage me. I need more than all these speakers that are on YouTube right now trying to teach men how to be men. You know what I need today? I need a move of the Spirit. I need God to transform me into His likeness so that I can walk like He walks. Hey, robobo shatalamaha. Hey, hey, hey. Can we stand to our feet today? I'm about to wrap up. I'm about to close this thing. I feel the Holy Ghost. Anybody feel the Spirit of God today? You see, God has handed out promises to this church. He's handed out promises to individuals. God has made callings of ministry to individuals. And he has told you, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful. Expand your ministry. Expand your future. But because many times we become distracted with our own desires, we become distracted with our own fantasies, we have aborted the promise of God we have aborted our ministries and while we are marrying our own dreams and fantasies we're leaving the women of Israel barren but what God wants you to do something today he wants to bless your life he wants to bless your ministry can I tell you meanwhile there is life there is hope and I come to tell you something your Satan has come to tell you that it's too late that if you've lost it all and I've come to tell you today by the anointing of the Holy Ghost it doesn't matter how old you are you could be 18 you could be 14 you could be 70 there's still a ministry for you there's still a ministry there's still a purpose for your life hey 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 but can I tell you this from now and on, it's time for you to become loyal to the apostolic way. You need to become loyal to the way of God because God wants you to be fruitful. God wants you to multiply, but it has to happen His way. If we're going to have a move of God this year, it has to be God's way. If we have a move of God in Landmark, it can't be just because we want to put on a performance. We need the power of God. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to do it the apostolic way. We need to do it the way of prayer. We need to do it the way of power. We need to do it the way of the anointing. Because words don't break the yoke. The anointing breaks the yoke. Oh God, break the yoke today, Jesus. Break the yoke of bondage to our own ways. Break the yoke of bondage, God, to the flesh. Break the yoke, God, of our own fantasies by the power of the anointing, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, if you want it, can you just raise your hands and say, God, I desire, I want to be used by you. I want to know you, God. I don't want to do it my way anymore. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it your way. If I have a ministry, it's going to be your way. If I have anything in my life, it's going to be your way. I'm done pursuing it my way. If I want a family, I want it your way. If I want a husband or a wife, I want it your way. Oh, my future belongs to you, God. Oh, somebody's got to get loyal to the way of God today. Somebody's got to get loyal to the apostolic way. 
Somebody's got to get loyal to praying. Somebody's got to get loyal to Jesus. God, I'm bound to you, God. I'm married to you and I'm married to your way, God. My future is not a future if it does not include you. Can I say something today? I want to say something today. Becoming loyal to God means becoming disloyal to yourself. Becoming loyal to God's way means denying the flesh. It means denying yourself and pursuing God more than anything. You have to love God more than yourself. You have to love his way more than your way. You have to love his promises more than your dreams. You need to love God more than positions, more than popularity, more than being noticed by anybody. You need to love God more than yourself. Oh, God, help us to get a revelation of this today, God. Help us to get a revelation uh, to become disloyal to our own desires, disloyal to our earthly dreams. Oh, help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God, to disconnect, God, uh, to not obey the immediacy of pleasure, God, of carnal desires, uh, to invest, God, in your kingdom. I want to invite you to pray something specific today. Something specific. I want you to pray this. We got to get practical sometimes. I want to invite you to pray. Now, you don't have to, but I want to invite you to pray that God would make you more loyal to his word. I feel the Holy Ghost. That God would make you more loyal to the apostolic way. That God would make you more loyal to what he has said about your future. And you know that's going to require a lot of you of lay, uh, uh, to release your doubts. Right? Because many times we say, oh, well, I don't have any dreams. I don't, I don't, really, I don't really believe that I have a future. It's hard for me to believe that I have a future. You need to believe the word of God more than you believe you're doubting. You need to believe God more than you believe your fear. Why? Because God loves you and he has a plan for you. You have a future in him. Can we do that right now? Just lift your hands. Today, Lord God, today, God, I want to be more loyal. Today, God, I want to be more devoted. Today, God, I want to be more consecrated. I'm choosing to believe you above my own fear. I'm choosing to believe you ab above my own doubts. I'm choosing to be loyal to you, God, more than I'm loyal to myself, God. Woo. This is it. This is all I have to say. Somebody receive. Somebody receive. The blessing of God is being poured out. The power of God is being poured out so that you can be fruitful. So that you can be fruitful. So that you can multiply. Oh, somebody get a hold of it today. There is life in your prayer today. There is power in your prayer because God is moving through it. He's changing things this morning. He's shifting things in the supernatural. He is shifting things in the spirit. 
Receive it today. Receive it in your soul. Receive it in your soul. You are the ground that God wants to invest in. You are the ground that God wants to bless. You are the ground that will bring life. You are the ground that will bring apostolic ministry. Receive life today. Receive life today. Receive life in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, God. Oh, pray, pray, church, pray. Somebody pray in the Spirit. Somebody really soak yourself in the Holy Ghost. Somebody somebody get a hold of it. Less of you and more of Him today. Come on. Less of you and more of Him. Less of you and more of His way. Less of your way and more of God's way today. Let's pray, church. Let's pray that we can get a hold of our conviction to love God with all of our soul, to follow God with all of our might today.